Cyberpunk is all about giving you a new experience, but here's some stuff I bet you didn't know. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things you didn't know you could do in Cyberpunk 2077. Starting off at number 10, I bet you didn't know you could take a train. It's funny and it's pretty easy to do, but with a little practice, you can get up to the train platforms and just ride the train around. If you really want to go for a ride, start the mission, I fought the law, jump on top of the hover car before it starts to fly off, and it'll give you a little tour of the city as it flies directly over a train line. It's probably one of the easiest ways to reach a train. Certain train rails don't like you getting on them though. The ones that do that you want to look out for are the ones with a wide landing around them rather than the ones that are just a single flying rail because the latter will just boot you off while the former is pretty stable. Now just wander around until a train shows up. It might be a while, and but they eventually do show up. You just double jump to get on top. It's really simple. It's maybe not official, but you get to take a free scenic tour of Night City. Uh, you do have to be careful about getting off though. It is a long way down. Big shout out to Sizable Lad for figuring this trick out. At number nine, there is an infinite money trick. It's not actually the fastest way to get money, but it's definitely the easiest. It's especially useful when you're just starting out and the requirements are fairly low. The only thing you're really gonna need to pull off the trick is the crafting perk mechanic, which is one of the first perks you get. How all this works is you find a spot with a lot of vending machines. V's apartment building and the city center are both pretty good spots with tons of vending machines, so they're good places to go. You just find the one selling Nicola soda and buy up as much Nicola blue as you can, the $10 one. At most, these machines carry about 50 of them, but a lot of the time they have less than 10, so yeah. From my experience, the ones in V's apartment tend to have a lot, while the ones in the city center tend to have less. But I don't know if that's just my luck or if certain machines only carry so many, blah, blah, blah. Either way, you still can get a lot of these pretty easily. Now, you just go to your inventory and break all those Nicola Blues down. You get a lot of common and uncommon crafting components. Take these components to build as many uncommon guns as you can carry and just take those guns and sell them for big profit. And just take a few minutes to do this and you'll get a ton of cash really fast. It's easy. It's relatively low cost you can do it basically from the start of the game there's probably better methods for getting money so just take this as an example there are a lot of ways to get infinite money in the game though at number eight if you want to avoid fall damage just slide off a ledge like this is super simple there's a lot of verticality in the world of cyberpunk you probably noticed and a lot of stuff you can just fall right off if you want to avoid a sharp and sudden death, just do this trick. Instead of jumping, just slide. It's kind of ridiculous how easy it is to pull off, but it doesn't matter how high up you are. All that matters is that you start the slide just before falling, and if you do it too early, it doesn't work. It's probably a glitch, and it might get fixed at some point, so be careful, but it lets you pull off some pretty impressive feats. Like, there is no parachute in the game, so this is the next best thing. At number seven, you can just cheese the razor fight. Like, it's kind of dumb, but it's a funny trick discovered by a guy named Nope. Great name, by the way. One of the first side jobs you get in the game, it's called Beat the Brat, which is a series of fist fights in each district of the city. If you can manage to win all of them, you get this final battle against an absolute beast named Razor. Like, most people aren't probably going to spend too many perk points on fist fighting this game, so unless you're just totally overleveled, this dude will be a challenge. But there is a really easy solution to winning this fight, and that is to cheat. Like, before the fight, just drop a little cattle prod into the ring. You just wait for the fight to start, grab the cattle prod off the ground, and lay Razor flat on his ass right away. Like it probably works with other weapons as well, but there's something funny about using a cattle prod to finish him off. Like it's ridiculous that it works, but it's really funny. And it's kind of one of those single player situations where you're like, this guy sucks, I hate him. Uh, like cheating is kind of satisfying against him to be completely honest. At number six, you can respec. It's something that is pretty easy to miss actually. Considering there's a lot of guides and other things out there saying that you cannot respect, it kind of feels like a big surprise that, no, that's not true because you totally can and it's actually pretty easy to do. All you have to do is buy a certain item found at many Ripper Docks, and I don't blame a lot of people for missing this thing. 
Like, normally when you see a dock, they open up the cyberware tab, but they actually have an inventory space separate from that. You switch to trade, and you can find the respec item right at the top. It's called Tabula e Rasa, and most cyber docks will carry it. It is not cheap, it's a hundred thousand bucks for one of these things, but using it allows you to redistribute all your perk points. There are some perks that are definitely worse than others, so this thing can be pretty handy if you got some perk that sounded good, but actually totally sucks. At number five, there are places you can go out of bounds in this game. Like for explorers, the general lack of invisible walls in Cyberpunk 2077 is great. With the proper application of the double jump cyberware, you can really creatively go outside the bounds of the map or reach places you really weren't supposed to go. One of the coolest spots for this, I think, is in V's apartment building. Some of the jumps almost feel like the developers put them in. They are so easy to reach up until the point where they aren't. The only requirement is to have the double jump cyberware equipped. If you've got that, you can get out of bounds from here. Big props to John Joe for discovering this route. You just go up the stairs, double jump to this grating, and then get on the elevator. From there, you find a series of ledges you can jump to that are pretty simple to reach. It's only until you get this big landing that the jumps start getting harder. To get even higher, you need to jump onto this scaffolding and fidget around until you get higher. This is by far the hardest part here. It's going to take a couple of tries to get it right, especially if you're on a controller. But once that's cleared, it's a pretty long jump you need to make, to be fair. But if you can reach this thing, it is smooth sailing from there. Just get to the next landing, wander around a bit until you find a window you can clip through, and you just keep going and you can get out of bounds in the game world. If you keep going from there, you can get a pretty nice view of the city from outside the building even. There's more places you can reach from up here, but you'll need something to protect you from all the fall damage at very least, because uh, these are some long falls. At number four, did you know tech weapons can shoot through walls? Like, they demonstrate this by making you shoot enemies behind cover in the tutorial, but for certain weapons, this effect is way more powerful than you might first think. Like, with the right gun, you can basically destroy a full group of enemies without them being able to fire back because they are behind a wall. A great weapon to demonstrate this is the Comrade's Hammer. It's basically a beast that can shoot through pretty much anything, but it's also not the only gun that can do it. Pretty much any tech gun can shoot through walls, it's just a matter of to what extent it actually is useful. If you just use the peak hack to highlight all the nearby enemies, it is like shooting fish in a barrel though. With the right setup, it's almost too powerful, like it's pretty wild. At number three, you can shoot people in the leg to avoid killing them. Like an interesting thing about Cyberpunk 2077 is you can go through the whole game without killing anyone, and you even get some unique dialogue if you leave certain bosses alive. Being able to take out enemies by sneaking up and knocking them out silently is pretty obvious. A lot of sneaking games give you that option to either kill or knock a guy out, but there's another way to take out an enemy without using lethal force. It's the Terminator 2 method. You just shoot them in the legs. It works for weapons that would normally be lethal. If you just aim at the lower body, enemies will go down, but they'll stay alive. It's especially useful when you're dealing with cyber psychos that they want alive. Problem is, it's also still kind of a roll of the dice. You don't want to do too much damage or you'll just blow off their legs, which is considered lethal. I would think for obvious reasons. But if you want to avoid killing people with lethal weapons, just don't use heavy damage ones or ones that charge up because you might end up just killing them anyway. At number two, there is a developer room that is hidden in the world, and it's not too hard to find either. You just look in the downtown area for the Arasaka building memorial. There is actually just a door on it that requires a code. There are not a lot of clues around for what the code could be, but it's pretty easy to guess. It's 2023 or the year that Johnny blew up the Arasaka building. Inside, you'll find a ton of slabs with names on them. It's pretty obvious that they're developer names. It's not too fancy, but it's a cool little find. And finally, at number one, there is a secret ending that you can play through. There are a total of five endings to get in this game, and one of them is a secret. There aren't any requirements to unlock. You just have to do something kind of unexpected, you know, during your final choice. This choice comes up shortly after the point of no return in the mission Nocturne Op 55N1, which by the way, amazing Chopin reference. 
Uh, you are on a balcony with Johnny considering your options. At most, you'll see four choices if you've done all the required side jobs, but there is a fifth secret option. You just choose nothing. You don't have a time limit. It's just a regular dialogue choice. So you'd think you'd just hold these options forever, but if you wait a few minutes, eventually all of the choices will disappear. And instead of enlisting any of your friends for the final mission, you instead do it yourself. It's obviously the hardest mission to actually pull off it's basically a suicide mission on top of that you only get one chance at it there is no saving during the entire sequence so if you die you just restart before this big choice and you have to start from the beginning which that sucks it is however the ending which makes you the ultimate badass for finishing so i mean go for it if that's what you want a lot of potential badasses out there in Cyberpunk 2077. What did you do? Did you find any of these, or is this the first you're hearing of all this? Are you going to do them? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, do not forget to click like. If you are not subscribed now, is a perfect time to do just that. Click subscribe. Do not forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.